Hello, and welcome back to the Variant Geek Podcast. I am Brennan. I am Zach, using a music stand as a table. I'm Jason, who's not with you guys at all, so... <laughs> I'm Brennan, who's eating for the first time at 8.30 at night. Om nom nom nom. What's she eating there, bud? Burger King. Oh, Burger King. But lettuce? Bo- pretty Boston. Yeah, that. Burger being that butt lettuce? Burger, Burger King would be Oh, Zach, you left the Discord before I could say it, but guess what? what? I got into my old account. <laughs> oh, you did? Nice. Yeah. It was about to load up, but then it was really loud, so I turned it off. Ah. Uh, <clears throat> I guess, uh, how are you guys doing? It's been two weeks since our last episode. Yeah. I'm all right. Your show has come and gone. It has. I love you. Your perfect now change is now done. That's whack. Yeah. How are you doing, Jason? Oh, just loving life. We had um, in service the last yesterday, or not yesterday, Friday. And then yesterday I reorganized everything in the library and moved three uh, bookshelves by myself. Nice. So, it is been... Are you enjoying being a sexy librarian? Oh, yes. The position that, like, in the newspaper, because it's public knowledge, because it's a public school. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, like, and like parents and people of the community reserve, like, they reserve the right to, like, if they think that somebody got hired that should have been, shouldn't have been hired, they can, like, confront the school board and say, like, we don't want this. Are they coming for your job yet? No, it, it's happened once. Like, it's happened oh. to somebody else, but. Oh, I was just, like, dang. There, there's wow. lots of story behind it, but uh, um, <clears throat> in the newspaper, my title is something like media coordinator, and I'm like, oh, okay, fancy. Uh, in recent gaming news, uh, I played the Madden 22 trial. Oof! It's uh, literally the same plays game. the exact same as Madden 20 because I didn't play Madden 21 at all. <sighs> I could have uh, yeah, told you that. Literally... Oh, I was I was not expecting much different. And then I've watched some gameplay of it of like people who have like the next gen consoles. It still looks like it plays the exact same. Check like, it out. N- there's nothing different other than updated rosters. Yeah. But like I mean there's maybe like some minor changes here and there, maybe like a new game mode apparently. Um maybe some minor changes like franchise mode, but other than that EA is just money grubbling. I mean, EA really said, money, please. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, I started watching Bricky play Back for Blood. I downloaded the beta. I just haven't played it. Mm-hmm. How was that? Uh, it looks interesting. Um, it has a lot of guns to choose from. The gunplay looks kind of interesting. Um, a lot of, like, Call of Duty guns, I guess. Like, there's the Scar... For those of y'all who like the Scar, I think that's a fan favorite. Uh, you can use like a 50 cal Barrett. Um, overall, but yeah, I mean, overall, it, it looks kind of interesting. Um, I haven't seen anything with zombies yet. He's just kind of in like the training mode to figure out how stuff works. That's funny. And then you're like, Borgor time. And I was like, oh, okay, Borgor time. Oh, gotcha. I was about to say, I was like, oh, this man just spent the whole episode just vibing, but now I got you. Speaking of Borger time, <clears throat> but a different Borger, I'm looking forward to playing Swoder again today. Oh, yeah, so I played it a little bit after I installed it, and I was like, uh, I could get into this again. And there goes you guys' livelihoods for the rest of the <laughs> school year. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Mm. I am you not playing the Vidya games after, like, this week, so... <laughs> Rip. Not a single one? Eh, maybe eSports every now and then. You ain't, touching it. you ain't touching Please the game. Please play eSports. I don't want to be thrust into other, the other people. I don't like Just that. say no! You don't want to be thrust, Zachary? I don't Are you sure about thrust. that? Is that... Uh, and then movie news. Uh, Venom 2 got pushed again. Oh, also in movie news, uh, Suicide Squad was a banger. It was a banger. So King good. Shark is a god. Bird. Bird. If you know, you know. If you know, you know. 
Uh, but I guess, yeah, we'll actually talking about a specific director in this week's episode. Yes. Uh, and who was that director, Zachary? Please uh, share it with the class. In my and many other people's opinions, the master of dialogue, which uh, Old could have used. <laughs> uh, old was poop. Yeah, Shyamalan. No. Come on, uh, bro. What are you doing? <laughs> Tarantino and his... Like what? Nine movies, I think. Nine, ten movies. Mm, yeah. Oh, not it's ten. Nine. Yeah. It's if it's you nine. count. Well, if you count, Kill Bill is two separate movies. I believe it's technically ten. You shouldn't count but, Kill Bill too. But like they clump those two together as like one movie. Yeah, because he really didn't. He directed he really... it. Yeah, but yeah. Anyway. Um, so I guess, uh, we'll start with Jason now. What, what's your favorite Tarantino film? Um, I would have to say, based off of, like, nostalgia, it would be, um, Pulp Fiction, because that's the first Tarantino movie I ever saw. Mm-hmm. But I did really enjoy The Hateful Eight. Mm-hmm. I liked... Was really good. <clears throat> Oh, I didn't even I completely forgot that it was a Tarantino movie, but I really enjoyed the pace of the movie and I guess the twists that occur in that movie mm-hmm. as well as like the kind of what happens to the each of the characters as the story goes on because isn't it every single character dies or or do the two that stay like because they're both shot, aren't they? I mean, yeah. I don't really want to say anything just because it's his newest. Or no, it's not his newest no, anymore. Not. I'm dumb. No, once but upon it's is... once upon. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. But, uh, but yeah, that, that's fair. I mean, I re- like Hateful Eight is a really good movie. It's um, good. It's a slow burn, it, yeah. but not nearly yeah. as much of a slow burn as some of his other things are. So, <laughs> and like what Netflix did with it, I actually thought was, I appreciated was very much. Like, what they should have done with Justice League is split Break it up. in four parts instead of Here's have this. that whole three, Missed. close to four hour movie. Yeah, mm-hmm. but well, so have you boys seen Jackie Brown? I have not. That is the one Tarantino film I haven't seen. Well, have yet. you I've seen heard it's his his least favorite? Death. Uh, most people's least favorite. Death. Death. Uh, yeah, that's the other one. See, because. I just watched Jackie Brown and I actually really liked it. I liked it a lot oh, more than um, some of his other movies because it's so it's like a it's like a, a money heist movie. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. And it's like okay. it's it's a lot more of like a we're going to steal money and it's got like mm-hmm. a it's kind of it's cooler I thought. Like I I enjoyed more of like the thinking aspect to it, but I can understand <laughs> I haven't like, seen it all the way like through. It. I need to. Yeah, I understand why some people might not like it or some people might not think it's his greatest because it is it's a lot more like you have to be paying attention. And there are a lot of scenes of just like full dialogue. And that's I mean, that's just a lot of people don't like that nowadays. Yeah, which I mean, like and the dialogue tells the story of what's happening, which is, I think, the strong suit of Tarantino. And like he it's so. He gets such a bad rap. Like, I've had so many directors, especially, be like, Tarantino's trash. And I'm like, but tell me why. And they really can't. <laughs> they just say, he, he likes feet too much. <laughs> well, they're like, oh, he just he's just overly violent. And I'm like, I mean, Django, you can make that well, argument. So, so with, like, Reservoir Dogs and Django Unchained and Inglorious Bastards and... Well, Inglorious Bastards, I give it a pass on the fact that it was wartime set. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, um, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, like, like all of those movies are very, very, like, full of gore. And, like, they're... they're once Upon uh, a Time wasn't, and it was I, justified where it yeah, was, in yeah. my opinion. Like, yeah. the only time it was, like, at the way end. But, like, yeah. um, Jackie Brown, um, I think... There are four characters that die in the entire movie, and mm-hmm. and three of the four deaths either happen off screen or like or like the camera like you're you're watching it from like a, a long distance, so oh. you don't see the death. The only one that doesn't happen is sp- spoiler of it, but one of the like the the main bad guy, and the lights are off, so you don't even see it. Mm-hmm. and okay. the reason the reason why he did that is because he was like i was reading and quentin tarantino was getting a lot of flack from critics because um reservoir dogs and then pulp fiction were really gory movies 
And so he wanted to like shift everything and go completely let the pendulum swing the complete other direction and so he had people die but it was mm-hmm. all off screen and there's right. like zero blood right but yeah, i mean i i think that's like tarantino he works the gore in well like very well he doesn't just do it for gore's sake i think most of the, most of the bloody scenes have a reason to be as bloody as they are <clears throat> and they're cool i'm not complaining yeah. i think they're dope oh, like, <laughs> i think i'd have to agree with you because um, <clears throat> i think we talked about it a while ago one of my favorite scenes especially from a tarantino film but like in just cinema in general is that last scene uh in once upon a time Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> Cause you can do like actually a pretty good impression of that <laughs> character. Uh, and it's just, just watching those guys come up and then him just drilling that girl with the can of dog food. So good. Highly recommend that movie. Yeah. And then obviously go figure DiCaprio pulls out the flamethrower. Yeah. I like how you say obviously. And it's like, <laughs> no, <laughs> <What>? no, <laughs> no, you know about I like characters yeah. that it's based off of because it's historical fiction to an extent. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, that's what a lot I, of the stuff that yeah, a lot of those characters actually existed, yep. and a lot of those events actually happened, except for the end. Exactly, and I like hearing. Um, it's it's really fun hearing um, Tarantino talk about why he does what he does because another thing he gets flack for is people are like, "Oh, you're trying to change history and like make it like." you know spoof it and he's like no i'm not spoofing history he's like here's what i think you know history could have been if my characters existed at the in this timeline yeah and like these interactions would have been real and to his in his defense other than <laughs> let's be honest in glorious bastards it was a little <laughs> over the top <laughs> at the end there sure. but uh a little bit. but for pretty much everything else like it it checks out and it makes sense um like yes is there still this like the above spectacular elements and especially in something like django where this man like learned how to shoot like four days ago and is out here blasting an entire army and I'm like yeah okay I, I I'll take it though <laughs> you sit there and you go something suspicious <clears throat> but it's never something that in the moment I'm like oh, this is dumb and unbelievable yeah you know it, it fits the worlds that he creates and it's like it's not like it's historical by any means it's fiction. It's in like it's, it's fake. It's not real. It's not real. Yeah. But uh, oh, yeah. yeah, I have to th- I have to give Tarantino all credit for me discovering some of my favorite movies and actors of all time. Like Christoph Waltz, I'll watch anything he's in now. Yeah, I don't well, care like, if the genre looks like something stupid that I'd never watch. I'll watch it if he's in it. Yeah, <laughs> like um, you uh, uh, Inglorious Bastards. Which I actually I think that's probably my favorite Tarantino film. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. just it's really fun. I love Brad Pitt's character so much, <laughs> um, and uh, but it introduced me to, uh, to Eli Roth, who played the uh, the Bear Jew, mm-hmm. and um, he's actually a, he's a decent director, um, especially if uh, y'all who are listening. Um, like horror films in particular, like kind of like d- d- not necessarily disturbing, but like kind of disturbing ish horror films. Because he directs the Hostel films, which are about kids that go over to a Europe hostel. and they end up staying at a hostel and surprise, surprise, they die. What? Horror? Yeah. Death? Nah, you can't. He also did a remake of a very infamous film called Cannibal Holocaust. Uh, the remake's called Green Inferno, I think. Um, Cannibal Holocaust is, I think it was, I think this is the movie. It was sent to Charlie Sheen, and Charlie Sheen called authorities because he thought he received a snuff film. Oh my god! Uh, but it's basically about an indigenous tribe in the middle of, um, I think, like the Amazon or something like that, that cannibalizes people. That that's basically the that the bare bones definition of it, and he remade it, and it's kind of interesting. And now he's directing the Borderlands movie, which will probably be a train wreck. <laughs> really but, good confidence in your boy there. I was gonna say he's well, just, like it is. Uh, <clears throat> the casting choices for Borderlands is spotty. Yeah, very sus. Let's be honest. But 
Yeah, I mean, Tarantino definitely brings the best out of his actors. I think he's one of the best directors at doing that. Yeah, and like hearing um, actors talk about working with him, it, 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 as an actor, it sounds awesome. Like, they all have, like, really awesome stories to tell after. It's not like other directors that, like, um, like, like Shyamalan, or for instance. Or not Shyamalan, excuse me. Oh, my God. Um, um, why am I blanking? Shining. Oh, uh, 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 uh starts with no. a K. Um, Kubrick. Yeah, Kubrick. 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 Yeah. Kubrick. Stanley Kubrick. 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 Stanley Kubrick's one of those directors that, you know, all of his stuff, the performers do amazing every time, but they always have psychological damage up the wazoo oh, afterwards. Yeah. And they're actually, like, he crazy. And that's it. They're out after that. Yeah. And then they come back like years later and they're like, yeah, no, I just kind of was waiting for him to die. I'm like, oh, <laughs> But uh, and then you you don't get stories like that with Tarantino. Like they're like, yeah, no, he's awesome. Like he's really I mean, good to work with. And the worst yeah. thing about Tarantino is his obsession with feet. I mean, that that's actually yeah. I think a big reason why Uma Thurman is in a lot of his movies is because of her feet. That she has very big feet for a woman, apparently. Wouldn't you know that, weather boy? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, so I I saw Jackie Brown. I just what rewatched. For the Is first Uma time, I just no. rewatched for the first time. For the first time, Jackie Brown. It's Pam Greer, and like, it's actually, it's not a spoof, but like, it's um, it like, it pays homage to movies that Jackie Gre- or uh, Pam Greer was in when she was in this, like, when it was the seventies, and they call it black exploit, black exploitation. Oh, mm-hmm. that's, yeah. and, and that's the movie style, and she was in a lot of those movies, so it like it pays homage uh-huh. to her, but uh. Okay. Um, there's a scene with um, one of one of uh, Samuel L. Jackson, who is a bad guy. It's his like house girl that he has. And she literally like the, the scene is literally her like sitting with her feet on the coffee table and it shows her feet like right next to Robert De Niro's character's drink. And it spends way too much time focusing on her feet checks out though. and then it cuts and then it cuts back to her feet and i went why that's the only thing that ever like made me be like Ugh. like in once upon a time on the dash with the hippie girls like you oh, yeah. wash your feet also your feet will be way more gross walking through downtown la but okay <laughs> And I mean, Tarantino is also a, de- a decent actor in the movies he directs. He's not—he's not the worst actor I've ever seen. Mm-mm. He actually does decently well. He follows yeah. his own advice probably yeah. pretty well. Yeah. Um, Zach, the movie we couldn't think is Death Proof. Death Proof. Death Proof. Oh, yeah, I was, yeah, was going to say that while you were right. talking about Jackie Robinson. Yeah. I didn't want to interrupt you. Yeah, exactly. Because I was like, because my mom has told me about that like. 80 billion times because she's yeah. she tells me to watch jackie brown and death proof at least probably once i will eventually gosh darn it yeah same like i, I just I have too much to watch to like we're that. finishing breaking bad now no oh, rest yeah. in we're, peace the homies yeah we finally watched ozymandias the only reason we started this show in the first yeah place. Uh, and, i just uh, <laughs> i just remember being so excited for that episode being like oh it's the one of the greatest episodes of television ever let me watch it and i went okay yeah, I was, I, like, was, I was like, yeah, it's pretty good. But like, if you've been yeah. watching the show, like, like binging it the way we were, it's like, okay, it wasn't really any surprises. Like you're like, but yeah. but I can see why they said that at the time when it got released, you know? Yeah. Uh, but, um, one thing I really really like that Quentin Tarantino does is he has a lot of the same actors in yes. multiple yeah. movies. Yeah, I it's love that. Brad Pitt's in a lot of his movies. Samuel Jackson. DiCaprio's in a lot now. Jackson. Yeah, yeah. Um, Kurt, Russell. Um, Kurt Russell. Kurt Russell. I love Kurt Russell in like all his movies. So uh, good. Christoph Waltz is in a, yes. in a, chunk a decent of them. chunk. Not the last, uh, not the last couple. Because well, he's in The Hateful Eight. He's in Django. He's Eli, in... So Eli Roth is in multiple um, of Quentin Tarantino Oh, yeah, movies. yeah. He is, yeah. What? Yeah. Well, oh, actually, since who I'm the only one who hasn't said it yet, I have to say I think my favorite Tarantino movie. Um, yeah, can actually kind of do either of you know what it is? It's probably Once Upon a Time, isn't it? It's not. It's not. Is it Django? Nope, it's Jan- Django. is my favorite because it's the first one that I watched and like really like was invested like in the you, story. You, and like. You oh, don't get me wrong. Once Upon a Time is one of my favorite movies of all time, <laughs> but my favorite Tarantino is Django, just because, like Jason said, the nostalgia of Tarantino for me. Yeah, that's fair. 
uh, and that soundtrack do be banging. Oh, yeah, Jingle. Actually, yeah, the soundtracks in most of his movies Have are you actually like, pretty good. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> and, I mean, you'll go through his movies, and he probably has a chunk, like a hefty chunk of probably the most, like, recognizable quotes. Like, oh, yeah. That quote, you're like, oh, yeah, that's that movie. <laughs> like, um, Samuel that's that's that movie. movie. Samuel Jackson's quote from Pulp Fiction when he's reading the Bible. Oh yeah. Say what again? Say what again? I Does dare you. Look? I double dare you, mother effer. Does he look <laughs> like what? Then why are you trying to like one? Please fill in the words with whatever whatever words I'm missing. Just fill them in with Ezekiel your imagination. Ezekiel twenty five seventeen. I think that's what it was, wasn't it? The path of the righteous man is beset on all sides by the inequities and selfish and the tyranny of evil men. There's a bunch more. I don't remember the rest. Are you reading yeah. it? I'm not. I could. I'm going to pull it up. I can finish it. Um, gosh, I'm trying to... Oh, uh, Christoph Waltz, um, his kind of dialogue when he's interrogating the Jew at the beginning of the movie. Oh, my God. No, when he's interrogating the farmer that's hiding uh, a Jewish family. Oh, yeah, that's right. I just that that shift. Oh my god! Like that him the shift from his best buddy to evil so quickly and seamlessly is and oh, goosebumps. Yeah. <clears throat> Obviously, the quote from Once Upon a Time. Uh, if, you, <laughs> if you've seen it, you, you know it. Uh, at the end of the movie, that just, gosh, that scene is just. I can just rewatch that scene like a million times. Because uh, when I first watched it, <clears throat> my friend who. Uh, doesn't like bloody movies all too much, uh, and is not really allowed to see bloody movies per se. Uh, we're like, oh yeah, you know it's Tarantino, and then he's like, oh okay, and we were like, oh, okay, uh, and then uh, it was fine throughout the entire movie, and then that end scene happened. And he's like, <gasps> and man, bro was, was like nineteen years old, like what? His his family's uh, it's a military family. Mm, gotcha. How's that, Doctor Pepper? I hear it. Uh, you know, it's it's pretty good. It's don't it, it, nothing will ever hit the same as McDonald's Sprite, but uh, it's not bad. It's pretty good. Pretty good. Fair, fair. Uh, oh, actually, it's completely shifting topics. Uh, started watching this new anime. Oh my god. <laughs> god if, it is. is it related to Quentin Tarantino? Uh, it, it makes me feel depressed. Okay, that then that means no. Uh, it's oh god, what is it's like the... So, uh, thank you for joining us this week on the Varying Cake podcast. <laughs> this has nothing to do with our current topic. And so, sponsored by <laughs> Rep Sports. Um, no, we're, we're, gosh dang it, where is it? I, I want to find the name of this. I don't butcher it. Oh my it. god. What the, just tell us in Discord after. Fine. Just everybody know it, it's on Funimation. Um, it's basically about a uh, former, like, ol- like, almost Olympic level gymnast who now has to act for a mediocre children's show. And he's 31 years old and feels like he's doing nothing with his life. Me, though. And he's very sad all the time. Me, though. Like, he even talks about to the children in as nice a way, sort of, as possible. How, like, yeah, don't end up like me, a crippling alcoholic. Not me, though. I'm so glad this relates <laughs> to, to Quentin Tarantino. Oh, I know. It's my favorite. I, just, I, I had this random thought. I was like, oh, yeah, I had been doing that. Um, but, like, yeah. Tarantino, pretty pretty good. He deserves good. more Oscars. Uh, I don't think he's actually won very many. No. It blows my mind. You don't think about it, but the man only had... Well, he only has 10 movies out. Techni- like, yeah, technically, like, 10 movies. Like you don't think about the fact that he's such a groundbreaking... Yeah. Yeah. Um, like, director, and there's 10 movies. Yeah, and he's yeah. says he's retiring after his next one. Which yeah. does he have? Would, what the next one is? Not yet, not uh, publicly at least. Uh, uh, <laughs> no, I think he did pub. Uh, did he? I'm thinking. Or am I thinking of a different? There's a oh, crap. 
I'll, I'll uh, mention in the dis- or Discord later if I think of it. But he's, I think he's remaking a movie. Um, it, it has something to do with Frankenstein. I know that. Interesting. Um, gosh, because it's like that movie. It's really old. Um, like I want to say like forties, fifties. Frankenstein. Uh, and it has Frankenstein <laughs> in it, and he's no, but he's at like a table with like a family. Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein. Actually, oh, oh you might actually be on. I was the right track. kidding. You, you, no, I, but you might actually be on the right track. I'll, I'll look at Madhouse. I, uh, whatever. I don't know what it is. I'm not going to keep rambling about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, there were rumors he was going to direct the next Star Trek. Star <laughs> Trek. And well, then the whole thing with Chris Pine and everything fell through and they canceled it. Oh. Well, so, uh, Technically, the movie Jackie Brown, just because I, I read it so I remember it, it was based off of a book called a lot of Rum. Stuff is. Well, like it was called Rum Punch, and he had actually bought or like the rights to two other of uh, the the guy who wrote that book, um, two more of his books, but he's never made any movies about it. Um, Jackie Brown was loosely based off of it. Like it was the same kind of, it follows the same like patterns and like same character names, but he puts his own spin on it. Uh Uh Uh, Actually, I guess uh, probably one last thing to wrap before we wrap up. Uh, What would you say you guys is like favorite scene from Tarantino is like, if you had to pick one scene out of all of his movies, and works. What do you think is oh, the one that word. stands above all? Oh, God. Word. I mean, the beginning of Inglorious Bastards is an easy standout for me. Fair enough. But other than that, I really like the uh, Bruce Lee scene in Once Upon a Time. Yeah. I like that whole little flashback sequence. Uh, I know you pointed out <laughs> a few times uh, that when uh, DiCaprio is very upset about his lines. It's uh, basically you. I loved that. I did that today on stage because my voice cracked at the end of a song and I got mad and it was the pizza song. And since it was the last show, I walked off and destroyed the pizza box. And I literally, for like two seconds, I was like, oh, God, I'm, I'm DiCaprio and Once Upon a Time. <laughs> what about you, Jason? What, what um, scene stands out above, above all? See, I, I'm going to say probably the scene where Mia Wallace ODs on heroin mm. okay. That's a, in yeah. Pulp Fiction. That's a pretty good scene. Because it, it, like I remember it being just one of the most like like pulse rate like not pulse racing scenes, but like like one of those scenes where it's like, oh, we weren't expecting this to happen and it happened. Uh-huh. But, um Either that or oh my word the gimp the gimp scene and yeah, uh, oh my fiction. word yeah Marcellus Wallace like that whole oh that Pulp Fiction in itself is is a movie that is a movie like it yeah, certainly it's, is it's a movie that I think everybody should probably watch at least once yeah it's one of those a class. lot of people don't like it because it's it's long but like yeah that that is get the thing over about yourself movies. well and. All of them are long, well, but they're narratives. They're narratives, yeah. and that's yeah. why that's why they have to be long to serve their true purposes. And no, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, like it's, I it's mean, not a bad thing. It's just they're all long movies. Well, I was gonna say one style that Quentin Tarantino uses is he takes movies and he film or like they're portrayed not necessarily chronological, not beginning yeah. to end of the story, and so like in Reservoir Dogs, that movie isn't shot. It, it's not. It's not portrayed chronologically because it goes back into the like past and it goes back to the present. And so I think that's something that kind of Quentin Tarantino, I not, I wouldn't say necessarily perfected, but it's but something he excels that, at quite well, but he excels at. And it's something yeah. that when you're watching a movie, you're like, Oh, I, I know where that comes from. Or like, I know, I know why he chose that style. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Uh, anything else you guys want to talk about with Tarantino? 
No, but I Dude, just good. I've been Go watching watch this brand new anime, and I'm so excited. Oh, you've been watching My Hero? No, I've been watching <laughs> Teen Titans. Oh. I sent Brendan a TikTok today. It just made me feel so nostalgic of uh, the Teen Titans PS2 game. That game was a bop, let me tell you. I don't know what that is. It was like a kind of a superhero beat-em-up. Uh, you basically went around beating up the enemies, and then eventually, like after every level or something, you'd have like a boss, like Jinx. You won. Stuff like that. It was, you could play as any of the Teen Titans. I know what you're talking about now that you say that. It was it but, was a fun time. Well, fun time. if if oh. we are, did you have something, Zach? Oh, I just wanted, uh, uh, you know, if you ever feel tired, I think uh, you could uh, go to uh, repsports.com. And, uh, I'm tired right now. It's nine o'clock at night, and I'm sick. Yeah, and I have to go help somebody move. Yeah, that's your fault. Um, says the person that said he was sick. I mean, he. Is. I mean, I am though. He sounds it. <laughs> nah, cap. Anyway, where do you go? Rep Sports. What do you purchase? Rep Sports. Uh, you purchase some energy packets or some drinks. Uh, they come in cans too. And uh, you use code. Uh, what code do you use again? What was that? Uh, G podcast. Uh, yeah, and you get fifteen percent off oh. your purchase. Wow! Yeah. Like Geico. Please do that because it uh, it'll really help bring up the quality of this podcast. Nah, you ain't, Captain. <laughs> <laughs> you are very sick. Nah, but. I, I think we'll, uh, we'll end the podcast there. Make sure you guys oh. subs- like and subscribe. Uh, head over to Kickstarter and check out the project uh, Roscoe, the short film. Go check oh, yeah, that out. Some pretty cool dudes are making nice. that. Yeah. Cap, I have never heard of a cool dude making a movie called Darn. Roscoe. Well, I guess I'm no longer a cool dude. I think it's Quentin Tarantino doing it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, well, go, uh, go fund the new Tarantino movie Roscoe over on uh, Kickstarter. Bet. Anyway, it, goodbye. Goodbye, goodbye. Be safe. <laughs>